Hey guys, it's me, Alex. I'm with my wife and her boyfriend, Don Terrius. We just found out uh, we're pregnant. Don Terrius is the father, and we're here to do the gender reveal. So, twist it, honey. What is purple? That means the baby's not binary! Oh! <laughs> I'm Dave Rubin and joining me today is the host of Primetime with Alex Stein on Blaze TV. Alex Stein, welcome to the Rubin Report. I don't know why I'm talking like this. Well, no, because it's Primetime 99. You want to have the high energy levels because I got to go insane for the Ukraine, Dave. So this is why we are going to go for your audience. This is Primetime 99. I need you to watch this show. There's like a million people watching this. So I'm begging you, please. So let's get on with this interview before I go insane for the Ukraine too much. Stein, you are on the short list of people I consider funny. I used to have a lot of people I consider funny. Now there's very few of them. For people that don't know you, how do you become funny? Where well, do you, you come know, from? What's going on here? Well, you know, I'm really not even that talented. I'm basically, I was dropped on my head as a child. I say that jokingly, but I really was. I actually had a metal crib because I, I broke so many uh, wooden ones because I was kind of a, a rambunctious baby. But I think that my formula for comedy, it's very simple. All I try to do is mix absurdity with reality. I try to make the most absurd things seem real so that when people watch it, they're like, is this real? Is this fake? And then that questions the reality in which we live in. And that is a formula for humor because you know this as a broadcaster, as a comedian, all anything that's funny has truth in it. So you just mock the true status quo that they're trying to ingratiate and trying to make us all follow. You just put a mirror up to that absurdity like Dylan Mulvaney and people will laugh. Is that uh, how you wake up in the morning? Like you're just like opening up the phone, looking at Twitter going, OK, they're just writing it for me. And I just got to get out there with these dingbats and make it happen. Dude, I say this all the time. I'm basically a hack comedian. I don't even have to write any material. I mean, the, the left gives it. And, you know, sometimes we can make fun of the right. But you know this, Dave, is that we have a uniparty. And you see all this stuff with, you know, I, obviously you're a political commentator. But, like, you know, you see the strife between DeSantis and Trump and all this political stuff. It's all lame. It all sucks. Really, at the end of the day, it's very important to save a republic. I'm not saying that it's not important. But, listen, uh, poli politics is just Hollywood for ugly people. So it's, it's, it's all annoying. It's all political theater. And, and it's really easy to mock because it's so absurd. You know, it's funny. One of the reasons that I, people know that I, every day I'm, I'm applauding DeSantis because I think he obviously is worthy of applause. But, but partly yeah. it's because of what you're talking about. I think he's ushering in an age of sanity. And it's like the guy needs some help doing it. Probably would not be great for you, but it might be good for the country. No, and, and honestly, you know, for the content kings, this is how you can tell the mainstream media, the people that suck, that nobody watches. I mean, literally, I bet your views are better than CNN's. But what, I, what I'm saying is they want Trump so bad. So when you see yeah. the mainstream media is against DeSantis, all of a sudden I'm like, oh, well, that kind of makes me wonder, too. And listen, I love Trump, but he had a lot of mistakes with Julian Assange, the you know, people of January 6th. And I mean, could he correct those? Yeah, I would hope so. I would think that would be the first thing he would have to go after and right some of the wrongs that he did. But at the same time, to say DeSantis didn't handle Florida. Well, you're absurd. It's like, that's what I don't get <laughs> is that we can't, you know, we can't see the forest or the big tree in front of our face. We need to take a 30,000 foot view and objectively judge these people and not try to create false narratives in order to make the person that we personally like sound better. Now, speaking of false narratives, you're, you're often out there as the, it usually is the lefties rampaging through the cities, burning down things, protesting. They don't know what they're protesting and everything else. Uh, you've been hit with things. People have spit on you. We've probably had acid poured on your head. I mean, do you ever really, really feel like you're going to be uh, hurt or something? We'll, we'll put a little B-roll so people can see some of the video right now as you as you talk us through some of this stuff. Well, yes. I mean, I go into these events and these people are on 10 different uh, antidepressants. They're probably on, you know, some sort of hormone therapy replacement. You know, that doesn't mess with your psyche, you know, your your psyche at all, I'm sure. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, these are very impulsive people that are there looking for they're, they're there to protest, and I'm the villain. And I actually have a background. I worked, you might not know this, I worked for the TV show Cheaters for a long time. So I kind of have a background in reality TV, and I hate to describe it like this because this is a serious situation, but this is the ultimate reality TV. When you go into these, these you know, a uh, Hollywood producer, central casting, they couldn't, when I went to San Francisco and I went to this trans rally, they couldn't yeah. cast these people. I mean, they couldn't literally, these people with the blue hair, it was every cliche under their rainbow was there. And so when you go there and you put 
for the camera. People want to see that. And yes, I am nervous because they throw hot coffee on me. They hit me. But at the same time, it's like when a dog chases a car. They don't know what to do when they get there. So it's like, you know, at the same time, they don't want the smoke. I'm 6'3". I'm 250 pounds. I mean, I'm a big man. But yes, is there somebody there that, that probably wants to take me out? There are people there that, that wish for my death. So yeah, I mean, it is a little nerve wracking. But at the same time, that adrenaline is kind of fun in a, in a sick way too, Dave. Yeah, well, I can see it kind of feeds you when you're out there, but mm-hmm. for sure, like when you have people right in your face and throwing stuff at you, it's, it's not the most thing. You'll probably appreciate this. About five years ago, I did an event in uh, somewhere up in Canada. Maybe it was Calgary uh, with this guy, Maxime Bernier. He's head of the Libertarian Party in Canada. And there were tons of protesters there. They're calling us Nazis and all of this stuff. You may remember the video. There was an elderly woman in a walker trying to get across the street and the Antifa's calling her Nazi. It turns out that her husband actually fought the Nazis. Anyway, they're smuggling us in through the back so that we didn't have to you know, go through the mob. And someone threw hot coffee on me. And I remember thinking once I realized it was just coffee and I was gonna be okay, because you always have that moment. Like, what the hell was that? I remember thinking, wow, I just had hot coffee thrown on me. Like, pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, but Dave, you just described exactly how I describe it. It was this warm liquid. It wasn't burning hot by any means. Right. You know, they had had it for a little bit, but it, it was like, is it urine? What is this? Yeah. Is this? You know, they throw cold water. That's a little more pleasant. That, you know, if you played football or played sports, everybody splashed cold water. That's not, that's a little more wakes you up. When it's warm liquid, you're like, oh, and then when you realize it's coffee, I guess it's a little more pleasant than like just warm urine. Uh, hopefully not, you know. Hopefully not urine, but they've drank out of the coffee probably, so it's already got some of their spittle. It's- and the, you know it's got the viral shedding in there, and you know, I've probably been vaccinated. Just by going there, I've been vaccinated by proxy, <laughs> uh, by just going to these events and, and bumping uglies with them. Were you always a, a politics guy, or was it more that you just wanted to be out in the field with people and then it kind of presented itself? Dave, forget politics suck. I was just telling you this. I'm a full-blown tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist. I don't trust either side. I believe that they're literally, listen, I, I, this, this, I hate to be like this, you know, but I honestly believe that people in power are anti-America. For me, we are not being run by human beings, Dave. We are being run by multinational corporations. You look at Ukraine, you look at Raytheon, Halliburton, these corporations that benefit from this. America has been totally de industrialized. We don't create anything. I don't know what industry we have other than bombs, bullets, some crappy planes that they can't ever, you know, they spend trillions of dollars and they can't even fly the plane. Some of these, you know, uh, secret projects that never get off the ground. So my point is we have so much bloat and so much wasted money, a hundred billion dollars to go to the Ukraine. And there's everybody on the right. No, oh, we have to help them. We have to help them. Forget about the Ukraine. Let's go help our Southern border. I mean, I see this every day and I'm not trying to virtue signal or anything, but Kamala Harris, they make it such a big deal. Oh my God, there's 20 immigrants at our house. I'm in Dallas every day. I walk around Bachman Lake. It's a lake near an airport. There's tons of immigrants with a backpack. You can tell they have like a fresh Walmart shirt and they're wearing a mask because they don't really know what the protocol is. They're, you can tell they're new. And oftentimes they're just walking around just looking for something to do. So it's a serious problem. And I, I'm not anti-immigration, but I'd like to actually not get kids sex trafficked here, not get kids overdosing on fentanyl at record rates. I mean, so that's why I, I just see a uniparty. We could stop a lot of these major issues. I think we could. But instead, we're more interested in getting everybody vaccinated, making sure Ukraine has vaccines, uh, making sure we have a new aircraft carrier so Lindsey Graham can go and bust a bottle of champagne on it. I mean, it just pisses me off. Not here in Florida, my friend. But yes, I get your point. In the rest of the country, that's pretty much what we're doing. I want to throw to a video because uh, speaking of how they just hand you people comedy, uh, you went to the Committee on Transportation. (laughs) Where, Where was this? Yeah, so this is in New York City, and this is my wife's boyfriend, Dontarius, who's basically, he's also kind of my muscle at a lot of these events, especially the ones in New York. You know, uh, a lot of people, they hire professional private security, not me. I want the least professional, no, uh, you know, no insurance, no nothing. So this is Dontarius and I complaining about uh, a lot of the transportation noises that are caused in making homeless residents, you know, making their lives difficult. Videotape. And we're talking about transportation. I'm here with my wife's boyfriend. It's just ridiculous that you, you guys are going to persecute him because he's a black man. That's why you guys are doing this. This is why you're bringing so much attention to him. When we walked in here, it was absolutely unreal the amount of security that he went through compared to the amount of security that I went through. And this is my wife's boyfriend. I mean, the things that he does to my wife is incredible. And we're talking about transportation. Let's talk about Pete Buttigieg, the transportation secretary. And he's the best secretary I've ever had because he's a homosexual. And as a matter of fact, that's why I started to become bisexual to be more like Pete Buttigieg. And that's why I've started to have a relationship 
with men on the side, and that's why I have Grinder. So, listen, we need to get federal funding. Uh, Selvina, is that how I say your name? Selvina Brooks Powers. Um, we got to get some federal funding from Pete Buttigieg because, listen, Joe Biden's over there. I know his son's smoking crack in the Ukraine, but that doesn't matter. I mean, Pete Buttigieg, you know, I know he's like on a gay cruise with his husband and they're, you know, like breastfeeding their babies and stuff, but they can help the transportation issues we're having here in New York. I mean, that's the federal boss, dog. I'm primetime 99. I'm a pimp on a blimp. So I wrote this song. New York City is so dang bad. This apple is rotten. What have we gotten? Nothing but violence. All I hear is silence from our leaders. My man's titties are out and they are bleeders. Because they get cut with a knife, he sleeps with my wife. This city is damn too expensive to get an apartment. We need to lower the rent. But instead, we're going to charge these poor drivers more money. But all I want to do is get vaccinated. Stick that vaccine in my arm. I want to vaccinate with this love charm. I love you guys. I'm primetime 99, Selvina. And my wife's boyfriend has a lot of issues. And, you know, I just hate these trucks when they're trying to take a nap and I'm playing Xbox and they're trying to make love. These, these trucks are making too much noise and they're just polluting too much gas. And they're just making it difficult for my wife and, and you know, her boyfriend, Don Terrace, to really enjoy Thank themselves. Thank you, time. Yeah, but but you, everybody else got to speak past the time limit. So I just have a couple more minutes. So what I'm saying is in this city, we have serious issues and my songs aren't going to solve it. And we have Eric Adams in the nightclub, you know, doing God knows what. Sir, it, if yeah. you're not going to stay on topic, your it time is, is finished. It, I can't talk about Eric Adams. Is he not on topic? We're talking about truck routes. That's today. what I'm saying. So is Eric Adams not in charge of the city? Is he not in charge of the Are truck routes? Are you finished routes? with your no, remarks No, I'm not finished. I'm not finished. I just don't understand why everybody else gets to come here and pontificate for five, ten minutes. And I try to talk about something. And you try to shut me down. Why Thank is you, it? Is it because I'm a homosexual? Is it because I'm bisexual? Thank you, sir. Is that why? I think they don't like that I'm bisexual. All right. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. Um, I'm IG Bum. Please help the homeless. Uh, it's a serious situation out there. I have to deal with the, you know, the, the, the trucks and all that as I'm trying to sleep on a box on 42nd. And I think it should be addressed. Uh, homeless people are people, too. And um, I'm a veteran of this country. Titties and all. Thank you very much. Those are veteran titties. Alex, people may be wondering, what do you mean your wife's boyfriend uh, Don Tarius. Before we get into the specifics of the content there, which was, you know, there's a lot to talk about. Well, yes, obviously for the people that are playing at home, I'll, I'll, in professional wrestling, we call it kayfabe. That's why The Undertaker yeah. stays in character. But I'll, I'll give you guys, because we're on the great Dave Rubin Report, this great program. I'm doing my Trump. I'm saying, uh, <laughs> because we're here, I'll break the kayfabe. I'm not married, and uh, Don Terry's is not really my wife's boyfriend. But what I'm trying to mock is there's so many people and content creators, guys like Destiny, and, and, and really there's just a ton of people that it's like cuckold society where they just let their wife or girlfriend be on OnlyFans. So really that's kind of what I'm mocking. And, when people hear it, they laugh, but I'm trying to actually kind of bring attention to the fact that literally we have a society of like these demasculinized men where they just let their wife do whatever they want. And that's happening, this polyamorous, you know, it's just, it's, it's a little more common than we like to say, like to think. And then when I say it like that, it kind of makes people wonder, you know, what's really going on with people's relationship. And it's funny. It's just funny to say my wife is more of That's yeah, why yeah, I yeah, say yeah. it. So it really is a thing, though, right? Like, this is a little out of my wheelhouse. This is really a thing where married it's a canon. men are... Yeah, it's, oh, yeah, yes, but I'm saying, but the Dontarius, this is so... I'm so crazy, Dave, because I've I've stormed barstool sports, you know, I, yeah. I've had a beef with... Uh, you know, and Dave Portnoy, I really, he invited me on his podcast and then disinvited me because he saw that I was anti-abortion because I went to an abortion rally. So that's why I, I, I took a Dontarius up there, and sometimes he makes appearances on my show, so he's kind of like canon in the Alex Stein storyline, and that's the weird thing about me, is my hero is Andy Kaufman. And that's who I kind of, uh, you know, want to aspire oh, to I be like. Oh, I see that. I see that. Yes. And so that's kind of why I have all these kind of side <laughs> stories that are going on. Are they true? Are they fake? I kind of, like I said earlier, I like to mix absurdity with reality. And then it makes people question what's really going on. Like, if you read my Wikipedia, Dave, it is written by psychopaths. It's like the most <laughs> negative thing ever. But what's funny about it is like, is that real? Is that fake? So I, I like to blend that line. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, the Andy Kaufman thing now makes so much sense to me because that's basically what you're doing. And speaking of kayfabe, like, he really took the kayfabe of wrestling into reality and then he brought it back to wrestling. So he was, like, layering this thing, I mean, really brilliantly. What, what he, an underrated he, comic. 
He created the intergender wrestling uh, division. Just think about that. I mean, that's, but you know, it sounds so funny. We need that now. People are like, oh, what's the solution? These people that are saying that, that uh, people like Leah Thomas deserve to compete against biological females. It's like, no, give them their own division. That doesn't make any sense. He's the 490th ranked uh, male swimmer. Then he's the top ranked female swimmer. Obviously, it doesn't take a scientist to realize that they have an unfair advantage biologically. So, yeah, to, just to think that Andy Kaufman saw the idea idea of men and women are going to have to compete in sports and that it's going to be okay. It's pretty brilliant. He, he really we'll, we'll could throw, see what's we'll going on. We'll throw a little B-roll on that too because Kaufman, for people that don't know, what he did was he would get up there as a, yes. as a male wrestler and he would invite a woman from the crowd and then he would basically kick the crap out of her and he started, people, because of kayfabe, people didn't know if it was real or fake. It was no, real. And they, they say it was real. He started on the David Letterman. He would call people out of the audience yeah. and say, I'll give you like a thousand bucks or a hundred bucks. I forget what the reward was if they won. And then uh, uh, he would just, at first it started real. He would actually pin these girls, you know, because he's a man. He could physically be stronger than women. And then it became where then he had to wrestle Jerry the King Lawler in Memphis, Tennessee, which was at the time the mecca of, you know, wrestling. That was like one of yep. the biggest territories, quote unquote. So obviously you can tell I love wrestling, but... Uh, uh, and that's kind of what I want my show to be like, Tucker Carlson, but mixed with uh, professional wrestling at the same time. Uh, but right, but Andy I'll give Kaufman you one, was brilliant. Yeah, go I'll ahead. give you one more wrestling thing. I mean, Jake the Snake was my favorite. You got anything for Jake the Snake Of course, no. Jake the Snake's great. I mean, dude, that era of wrestling was the best with, you know, him and the Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan. And, no, the, that was the era. That was the good old days. Now I don't watch it. I don't keep up with it. But Jake the Snake, he was one of the best ever. Dude, the Snake, dude, come on. And then Damien, what did he have? Damien. Yeah, and then what did he have? The snake corner? What would he have? Uh, he had his the, own little The show. Viper's Pit. The I Viper's think it was Pit. Yes, yes, dude. He was epic. Yes, Jake the yeah, Snake. I'll dude. tell you something amazing about the Viper's Pit, and then I promise we'll move on. You know that there is a special <laughs> unaired episode of the Viper's Pit because he had Hogan on as his audi as his guest at the height of Hulk Hogan, and they were supposed to get into a fight, but the audience was siding with Jake, so they never aired it because they wanted Hogan to be the biggest star of the WWF, but more people like Jake. How about that? No, I, I not, I'm not not wanting up you. Be, I'm not going to one up you because you know you're much cooler than me. But listen, I have become friends, and I just made fun of how I make fun of cuckolding people. But this is a real we're this is a real podcast. We're getting into the the nitty gritty. I've become friends with a guy named Bubba the Love Sponge, who is actually the guy that let Hulk Hogan have sex with his wife. Have you ever heard about that? You remember that the leak, the Gawker sex tape that got leaked? Well, this guy yeah. Bubba the Love Sponge was on the Howard Stern Network on Sirius. He was actually a big broadcaster there, and he actually. He was best friends with Hogan and then this thing came out Hogan won this lawsuit but this guy I talk to I go on a show sometimes he talks about Hulk Hogan is the worst guy in the world not that Bubba is you know the most moral guy but he just said Hulk Hogan had his own locker room didn't you know it's called the wrestling putting people over when you let somebody beat you and it you know helps you know put them over essentially Hogan yeah. would never do it he would never put anybody over and so he was the worst Hogan is a, wow. not a nice guy I spent guy. a couple hours with Hogan years ago did you ago. like him was uh, he nice what was he like was, I was in an office with me, him, and uh, Jimmy Hart for a couple hours. Yeah, he was totally cool. Couldn't, well, have, couldn't course, have been nicer, Of course, of course. That's what I'm saying. You know, he probably is a nice guy. I'm just hearing this from a guy that has heat with him, but it's just funny because now I sit around and when I talk to him, I go on a show. All we do is talk about Hulk Hogan. That's why I'm <laughs> bringing this up. And I always make fun of Bubba about Hulk Hogan stuff with his wife. But it's just this whole, it's an insane world we live in, uh, Dave. And, uh, you know, re professional wrestling, that's kind of what politics is. I know to try to bring it all back into this, it's really like, oh, I like this team because they did this. But then the next week they do something like oh i hate them so it's really just meant to entertain us and kind of distract us from actually you know going after these people or solving the actual problems in my opinion yeah, the line i have on that is that we're sort of in the show must go on version of democracy and mm -hmm. i think trump really understands that to a degree so he's just keeping the show going again that's why i've been so high on desantis because i sense he's he's trying to actually correct it in like a fundamental way to get away from the stuff that is good for your career, but not great for the country. Where Trump, you know, Trump did stuff with the WWE, remember? Yeah, so he, he was gets in the Hall the of Fame. Thing. He's in the, is Hall, he of in the Fame. Hall of Fame. Yeah, he's in the WWE Hall of Fame. But, but this is how you know it's all wrestling because look at AOC. She really gets nothing done. And then, you know, I think it's Vogue or Vanity, I forget which magazine, said that she's the third most popular politician behind Biden and Trump. You know, I mean, I, obviously I don't believe that. I'm just saying she's up there 
why? What does she do? Because she's an old bartender? I mean, you know, it's all it's all fake. And there's 432 congressmen and women. You don't even know half of them. I go and I sit on Capitol Hill and I go and I try to interact with them. I'm walking around their offices. I'm like, who is this guy from Montana? Who is this guy? You know, it's all, it's like, you have to be like Marjorie Taylor Greene. You have to be very, like, confrontational to even get noticed, to get picked out, the Dan Crenshaws, the few celebrity politicians. And then once you realize that's what it takes to become that kind of famous politician, and I'm very good friends with Marjorie, but you want to keep your name in the limelight. You want to keep on pushing the envelope. So I guess we need more politicians that are trying to make a name for themselves, but at the same time, it's all kind of kayfabe. Now, what's the deal with AOC? You touched her butt or something? No! My gosh, no! Now I am going to go to jail. But listen, in front of her <laughs> boyfriend, Riley, speaking of cuckold, he didn't do anything. I saw her and I said, oh, AOC, even though you like to kill babies, this is at the time of Roe versus Wade, a lot of that controversy. You're still very beautiful. And I said, you're my favorite big booty Latina. And she freaked out. And it would not have been a big deal day. But she went on her Instagram and made literally 17 stories. Yeah. Oh, this guy. She's like reverse selfieing on her phone. You know, she's like, oh, this is the guy. You know, this is this is him. She's like literally showing me on her phone. She put me in. We keep on going back to wrestling. This is the wrestling episode. She put me over. She's like, oh, this Alex Stein guy. She took my video and then she tweeted it. And then it got like, you know, 20 million views on her page. So I couldn't have asked for a better result. And I was just trolling and at the same time I was just making a compliment she's so pro sex worker she's so pro abortion you know she's a been a bartender for me to say you're a big booty Latina it was a joke and she acted like she's the biggest victim and then she went on because I did in front of the Capitol Police, after voting for like three or four hours, she came out. It was late at night. It was like 11. And she said that on January 6th, some of the Capitol Police were responsible for letting some, some of the rioters in and that she didn't trust some of the Capitol Police. She, that, those are her own words. So she's just, uh, you know, it's, it's easy. These people have very fragile egos. So when you kind of call them out, like Dan Crenshaw, they sometimes melt like a candle. Are you uh, worried that the higher your profile gets, it'll get harder to ambush these people because they know what's coming? Well, I mean, yes, but I constantly have to reinvent the wheel. Like, I can't just always go to, you know, trans rally. I'm done. I mean, I'm going to still go to these, but come on, Dave. You think I want to go to another drag queen story time for children in Brooklyn, New York? I swear I don't. Even Jimmy Kimmel made it, played a clip of me doing an interview, and they said, you know, the guy's like, oh, sure, he doesn't like going to these drag events. And he's right. I'm like, Jimmy Kimmel, they're right. They're making money. I don't want to go to these events. But so I'm going to have to reinvent the wheel. I'm not going to have to do that. I'm going to have to get in politicians' face. I'm just going to have to keep doing new stuff. I can't, you know, it's like Andy Kaufman. You got to create a new angle every day. People know that I like giving the devil his due. That's what I try to do on this program. When you go to the drag queen story hour and you see the parents there with kids, putting aside the trolling for a second, what, have you ever had a sane conversation with one of the parents, even off camera? And like, really, what do they think they're actually accomplishing by taking their kids to these things? Well, dude, you just nailed the real crux of this whole thing. It's a lot of times, and I've seen this, and I can see it with my own eyes, it'll be like two women, and it's not that they're lesbian, it's usually they're like a heterosexual woman that's getting back at their ex-husband. Or, you know, that I've, I've seen that multiple times, and then there's a guy, Jeff Younger, who his ex-wife is transitioning one of uh, his children to a girl that, you know, he doesn't want, and then you look at Dwayne Wade, who transitioned his son, and Gabrielle Union is the stepmother who encouraged that, and the biological mother is actually sued and tried to stop it. So that's a big thing of getting back at people because people are so mm. vicious. And I know that sounds crazy, but I see it with my own eyes. And you're just kind of like, it's it's because I don't see a lot of the two-parent household. I have seen that. I have seen two parents that look like they were, you know, the mother and father of a kid. But most of the time, it's kind of like a two women or two gay men or, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't, it's not the traditional families that I've seen go to these events. And, and that's the problem. These kids aren't choosing to go there. It's parents taking them there to be edgy or to be ultra progressive. And really, I, like I, I think the parents, maybe their heart is in the right, you know, spot. Some of these parents I see, like maybe they're not so ingratiated in this weird uh, stuff. But at the same time, there's no excuse to take a kid to a bar or to a drag show or even a library. I, I just, I have very little sympathy for these people. But a lot of times, it's vicious. I notice is the motivation. I think. Yeah. Do you, are you ever afraid that we're all butterfly affecting this thing? Like, you know, it's existed for a certain degree. We push back, we make it bigger. Then they do it to outrage us. We expose them. They outrage us. No, we Dave, expose them. They, they, what are you talking about? Dude, you see this now that we've gone ultra left. Now you see the ultra right. They get mad at you because, oh, there's a gay conservative that has a blue voice. You see that because now we've gone ultra right. So now we've gone ultra left. So that's kind of the almost the problem is we're ultra polarized. And when most people are somewhere in the middle. So I think that's kind of, you know, one of the big 
biggest problems, I guess, that that I feel like as a society is now we're we're so polarized. You're right. Like since we since I went, I exposed a drag queen story time for kids. Drag your kids a bread event. Now ten thousand more bars are like, let's do a drag event for kids. So you're right. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So the more you push yeah. it, you know, the more the more farther right people want to go, the the farther left people go. So it's kind of this weird dichotomy where they, they almost feed themselves by just it's like a magnet that doesn't uh, stick together. You know, they just they once try to push them together. We just become more polarized. What else have you been uh, thinking about lately? Are you well, are you doing anything else? Well, I guess you're going to constantly be reinventing yourself. But like, do you do you like set these things up? Like, that's what I'm going to do next month, month after that. I'm going to do that. Or is it kind well, of just what's going on in the news at the time? Well, to, to, to be honest, I'm kind of frustrated. I recently went up to uh, Project Veritas to, uh, you know, I, I had a bit where I was going to go there and talk to the CEO about uh, them ousting, you know, James. And, and that ended up kind of getting messed up. I had some, in, you know, Project Veritas insiders and then they got kind of leaked. So I'm just saying, you know, I have some, you know, stuff on the horizon where I want to go and, and confront some more people. And, I, and honestly... The thing, please, guys, watch my show. I'm there at the Blaze grinding every day. I know I'm begging. I don't care. I got a plug, Dave, in front of your huge audience. I go insane for the Ukraine. It's literally not telling anybody to ever do LSD, but it would be like Tucker Carlson on LSD, and he is my biological father. But no, no, honestly, Dave, if I, like, what's bugging me the most in society right now? It's like, you know, it's, you know, I, I want to say politics, but I feel like there's going to be, and I try to be conspiratorial or whatever but i just think that if we don't watch out the idea that you saw tucker carlson just put out you know they want us to eat bugs i really do and it may not be in our lifetime you know uh you know you see all this artificial intelligence this and that but i do believe that one day they're going to say because of climate change they want us all to live in pods and they're going to say yep. here plug into the metaverse and in the metaverse and uh, here on earth you only live for you live for like 70 years, but in the metaverse, you live for a thousand years. And I don't believe they're going to have the technology in our lifetime, but I do believe, and I hate to be blackpilled like that. I think that's the future they want us to be all one sex where we basically can't procreate so that they can, you know, basically, you know, depopulate the world. And if you don't think that's happening, you know, the idea that they tell every single kid to get an abortion, yet every single person that comes up through the southern border comes from cultures where abortion is basically, you know, dis you know despised. These people aren't having abortion. So it's just kind of weird. They're basically depopulating us right in front of our face. So I just, I, I think for us as human beings, we cannot point to, oh, it's this country doing this. It's Ukraine doing this. It's making my life bad. No, you are responsible for your happiness. You are responsible for creating a life that makes you happy. You are responsible for doing a job that you respect, you like, and not being a debt slave and not being a slave to, you know, social media, even though you and I are on it like crazy. Sadly, I've kind of say that hypocritical because I'm addicted to social media. But like I said, it is important for us to find our own happiness and be our own, you know, the man in the mirror. You know this, Dave. It's not the government. The government's going to kick us all day long. The right side, the left, the right wing, the left wing are on the same bird. So you are in charge of your happiness. That's one thing I try to, you know, tell people when they watch my show or when Dude, I you come shifted on shows very like yours. Quickly. You, were, you were going black pill there, but then you shifted to the white pill very quickly, right? The black pill is we all end up in Matrix, Ready Player One, Minority Report, total recall. And then the, the white pill is what you just said there. You don't have to participate and you can carve out something on this mortal coil that's pretty decent for you. And it sounds crazy, but if you really look into it, a lot of these people like the Klaus Schwabs, they, they have all these think tank groups. They kind of tell us what they want to do. You know, they tell us that they want to scare us with climate change. But if you just look at people like Barack Obama, who bought a house in Martha's Vineyard, or you, you look at Bill Gates, who bought a house in, you know, I believe like southern, south of San Diego. If these people are so worried about the, you know, polar ice caps melting. Why are they all buying beach houses? So it's just, it's very hypocritical. They all fly on their private jets that create emissions that are insane. So it's just, if you really kind of see, these people aren't even following their own rules, then you don't become a victim because, uh, listen, Dave, just to, now to get really sad, I joke around a lot, but this is why I'm a man on a mission. You know, my mother actually died in October 2021. She was, was short of breath. I begged her, begged her not to go to the hospital. She went to the hospital. She was in there. She was kind of, she was breathing. We're talking. We said no room desivere. They gave my mom room desivere and she died five days later. Her, her <laughs> organs filled up with fluid and she died in front of my, you know, right in my arms, right in front of me. And they literally murdered my mother. They did not have any sympathy whatsoever. And these are the same protocols. These people like Dr. Fauci who tests his vaccine on eight beagles. So we really do have like a medical industrial complex where I was a huge victim. So that's why like, I like to laugh because if I don't laugh, if I don't make fun of stuff, I will cry. So I lost the person I love most uh, 
in, in the world. And uh, so that's kind of why I'm on this mission, Dave, to kind of call out the absurdity because I was a victim of it. And I don't want anybody to feel sorry for me. Do not. Your sympathy is not needed for me. I hate that when people say, I'm so sorry. I'm not telling you this to feel sorry for me. I'm telling you this to warn you that there are bad things that can happen to good people. To my mom who got vaccinated because her doctor said that was the thing to do, even though she knew you know, it wasn't tested, but she didn't want to lose the care of her primary physician. So People got bad information, and I and my mother were victims of this thing. So I, the only way that I think I can call it out is not by being necessarily super serious, but by mocking it because they mocked me and they mocked my mom when they uh, gave her remdesivir, knowing that it, it was not going to help her. Well, then instead of saying I'm sorry about your mom, I'll do the one thing that you want me to do, which is give you a chance to promote your show one more time. <laughs> yes, okay, prime time with Alex Simon. Don't feel sorry for me, guys. My mom is my biggest fan. She's my biggest fan. That's the only thing that sucks, too. Now I work for Glenn Beck. Now I got a cool studio. I got all this crap going on. I'm making a little bit of change. You know, I'm acting strange, getting paid a little bit of change, and I don't even get to share it with her. So if I want to share it with you, the audience. Come watch my show. You're going to see me go unhinged. You're going to see me happy, sad, every emotion, because I'm prime time 99. I wear my emotions on my sleeve and I just want to say thank you so much for letting me come on your program and, and dude it is an honor and privilege I know you get hate but I think any hate not that you get a lot of hate but I think that's what it takes like if everybody universally loved you and I then we wouldn't be controversial or edgy so that's what I, I, I think that makes you so special so Dave thank you so much for letting me come on Stein I know you're hunkered down there with Glenn Beck you know sharing a bed in Dallas but you come out <laughs> to the free state of Miami dinner on me yes sir yes sir alright Dave well anytime so this is the vice reporter. You can tell the only one in a mask here. So how are you doing? Just doing my job. She's here trolling everybody here. So she's the only one here in a mask, and she's just saying negative stuff. I can't believe they let you in here. Do you feel like a lion, a sheep in the lion's den? Um, I have credentials to be here. So. Yes, yeah, so do I. But I'm saying, see, this is vice, guys. This person, she's trying to troll this event. She thinks all of you guys are losers. So that's what she posts on the internet. She posts the most. She posts the most out of context stuff. See, Vice is the worst media company there is. They're all liars. So, what do you think about your crappy media company? Just do my job, and if you have a problem with being here, you can take it up with CPAC. I know, but don't you think Vice is a bunch of liars? No, I'm very proud. Of oh, them. you're proud of uh, you know you guys mainly talk about all drugs. Are you are you a drug addict too? Like all the Vice content you make? Guys, this is the Vice. Guys, this person, she's a loser right here. She's the only one in a mask. You see this? This is what a loser looks like. She's got her coronavirus. How many vaccines do you have? Are you on are you on your fifth vaccine? It's none of your business. Oh my! Oh, it's not. So why do you want to mandate them if it's none of my business? Are you pro vaccine mandates? Oh, it's none of my business, but she's pro vaccine mandates. Guys, you see this? This is what a vice journalist looks like. She comes here. This is what a vice journalist looks like in her little mask at the conservative event. Now she's scared and she's getting attention. If you're looking for more enlightening and maybe even humorous conversations, check out our comedy playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.